We are open for business here on EagleNewsLive.com. According to the Swab Foundation, a social entrepreneur is a leader or pragmatic visionary who achieves a large-scale, systemic, and sustainable social change through a new invention or innovates by finding a new product, service, or a new approach to a social problem. Well, the person beside me, according to sources, has already helped 382,000 Filipinos and 690,000 people throughout the world to get out of energy poverty. Leader of Lights, Ila Angelo Diaz. Welcome Hello. to Thank you. Service. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you a few questions. What is your concept of social entrepreneurship? I think social entrepreneurship is a, a broader sense of leadership uh, than business. Sometimes, you know, uh, business has always been taught to us in school, like, you know, invent the minimum and take out the maximum. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, they don't tell you that sometimes uh, you have to think about the larger definition, which is, what about your employees? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be? Are they well? Are they earning well? Okay, uh, are, how about beyond the borders of your of your of your factory? Or how society? How, mm -hmm. how are they doing? Mm -hmm. And and the biggest one really is uh, what about the environment? Mm -hmm. uh, is it something that your the impact of your your operations is going to damage the environment for hundreds of years to come? So I, I'll cut you there, uh, Ilak. What is the difference with between a business entrepreneur? from a social entrepreneur? Well, the, the getting there, that means that a social entrepreneur uses the power of business for social good. Mm -hmm. Equity mm -hmm. is not yours or uh, owned by uh, you know the investors, okay. but the investors is society. So let's say mm -hmm. uh, you put up a business where uh, part of your, your work is uh, teaching women like rags to riches, creating a, a, you know, used over rugs, mm -hmm. uh, tela, no? and, and, mm -hmm. and weaving it into mats and high-class bags. But mm -hmm. that money goes back to the women mm -hmm. uh, so that they earn, you know, uh, uh, better. They, they be, they're able to earn enough to feed their children, uh, more than 10,000 pesos per month, mm -hmm. uh, where, uh, uh, where they also get to expand, uh, in fact, without you. So... Uh, Litter of Light is, is, is that uh, we were trying to solve energy poverty mm -hmm. without having to import solar lights from mm -hmm. abroad, okay. which costs sixty to eighty percent uh, sometimes wow. of the of, of, of the of, of the funds. Mm -hmm. So, the, as, as a social entrepreneur, did you really plan it? How did you start? What was? Uh, did you think of okay one day you thought that okay I'm gonna be a social entrepreneur? Oh well, what was your story? You you start out doing good uh, with a very uh, you know uh, philanthropy thought, which is mm -hmm. if I had a certain amount of money, I can use this money for for good. Mm -hmm. But then you use a cash burn system that was mm -hmm. very painful for us. We raise funds for six months mm -hmm. and then we burn it. Uh, so one minus one is always zero. You're always starting from the base, mm -hmm. whereby an entrepreneurship uh, uh, attack or an approach uh, uh, an entrepreneurship approach. You use the capital, you work with the community, the community earns, but you get to sell the goods and the money goes back uh, into your uh, foundation. Once again, the equity is not, I get a salary, mm -hmm. but the equity is not mine. Okay. Uh, this is the communities to be able to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they are part of the creative process. They are part of the energy. And so that's why I call it a social entrepreneurship. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's using society, the people that need it, mm -hmm. uh, to be the ones that are the, the main uh, energy themselves to be able to provide the solution, but also to expand you know, mm -hmm. to expand their help towards others. And, and I can uh, display this a little bit more in, in my journey. Mm -hmm. So some of the questions is that, is it, uh, with social entrepreneurship, could it be more both pro for profit and not for profit? Well, that's what I was saying. If uh, the, 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 the activity okay. has a profit, okay. the equity or the ownership of those profits mm -hmm. is not... It's it's not uh, as I said it's not the it, it is a, it's it has that shared community so it's a little bit of cooperative mm -hmm. but also at the same time it takes it a little a little bit more than than just sharing the profits mm -hmm. and what is that special invention or if uh, a special product that or or a solution that you have done and that you have shared it uh, with the world. We've been seeing a lot of your videos and a lot of write-ups about uh, Litter of Light with 
here is a lamp and what's the concept behind it how did you discover or how did you enhance an existing idea uh you know let's let's start basically okay. uh with uh, uh solutions to housing mm -hmm. uh, what what we did many years before as, okay. you know my startup was realizing that it was not uh, you know, it was not just seeing people that are running the economy, the OFW staying in the streets, especially in the shipping industry, okay. whereby we opened up a dormitory okay. uh, for 2,000 seafarers where they could pay us only for 50 pesos uh, a night. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, uh, if they did not uh, if they did not have the money, uh, they could work it off. They can perform serv uh, certain services uh, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the, the dormitory. If they brought in people, they earned a certain kind of living. So mm -hmm. it's that kind Kind of energy whereby you're using communities to be able to work with you to keep mm -hmm. a social you know a social good up uh, when we started uh, working with schools we were saying why are we bringing almost 90% of the materials from the shore to the islands why not mm -hmm. build locally why not okay. use the local materials use the local people right. and one of the things about building in schools no bamboo schools earthen schools plastic bottle schools where people source it build it and then they earn from the construction of it rather than some outside contractor mm -hmm. you know? right. uh, the fact that we were trying to get mothers uh, to be able to bring their kids to school mm -hmm. so one of the things that we said is why don't you build the solar light uh, for your your child mm -hmm. and then later on when they were working they would come bring their child to school and we would pay them to make solar lights which first we sold right mm -hmm. but then we realized that there was an even bigger opportunity uh, that was out of just us. We we said, why don't you just rent the solar lights? Why don't you take 20 of these, mm -hmm. bring it to your, your Sari Sari store, and start renting it uh, to the people outside? You keep you keep the solar panel, mm -hmm. and then every time it's discharged, they come back to you, they pay 10 pesos, and then you charge it for two hours, and then you, you, you get to do it. So uh, how about taking kerosene lamps? That are there's 13 million kerosene lamps out there. Mm -hmm. Why don't you charge them for converting kerosene lamps into solar? Mm -hmm. How about street lights? How can you uh, talk to people in the street and say, look, if you pay me a hundred pesos a week, I will maintain the street light over there. So this was a very interesting way. Instead of giving a an imported, patented, and expensive solar light, mm -hmm. let's say from China or India, which are designed to break, mm -hmm. like their batteries. Well, mm. it's designed to break. Okay. Yeah, it, first of all, it's micro circuits. So the micro circuits you can't repair it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're actually made out of parts that you can find from your local tindahan, electronic tindahan. Okay. Uh, you could actually build a whole industry based on. Uh, teaching women cooperatives to be able to do it. So Liter of Light expanded that way. And then later on, people started asking us from remote areas mm -hmm. and saying, we said, well, where, where's your husband? And they said, What's, we're a co women cooperative. What do you mean our husband? Well, he brings vegetables and fish to the wet market in Manila. Mm -hmm. okay. They come back with empty crates. I'll tell you what, we loan you okay. 10, 50, 100 uh, s uh, parts. No? Okay. You build it. When you, you say build, they assemble it. Assemble it. Because okay. if you don't assemble it there, if mm -hmm. something happens and breaks, okay. there's no way for them to come back to Manila. Right. Why not repair it since it's so simple? Mm -hmm. So we would create this kind of loaning of materials. When it gets there, they build it. And then uh, 60, 90, 120 days, they pay us mm -hmm. back. 90% repayment rate. We don't have to pay the logistics anymore. Women know how to repair it. But there was something really fantastic that comes out of social enterprise. And this is, remember, the equity stays with the community, right? Correct. The equity Correct. is not like they pay for imported lights. It mm -hmm. goes to a dealer in Manila and then goes abroad. Yes. So you see how business right. sometimes depletes what is called mm -hmm. cash flow from the community, whereby social enterprise increases cash flow. Mm -hmm. It's because once you have money, then the women were making decisions, whereby mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. need we need to have doctors here mm -hmm. to take care and of And the children. money stays in that community. Yes, so it mm -hmm. becomes a richer community. Okay. So equity, the equity is being used now for doctors. If they want to bring books, they now can use, uh, they can now buy books. And so women, women cooperatives, and, mm -hmm. and this just, you know, my knowledge of working with women cooperatives, they invest in society. They invest mm -hmm. in, their, in, in their village rather than going always into debt because it's a, it's a, it's a product that always breaks. Mm -hmm that is designed to break, people are going more and more into that 
as you're trying to access energy. So bottom-up approach was something that enriches the community and enriches the health, enriches the knowledge. And uh, you'll see later on that the streetlights we're now putting repeaters onto it because now we've come mm -hmm. up with a special program where uh, you could communicate in the whole village called mm -hmm. Local Area Network using old mobile phones to WhatsApp with each other. Oh, it's like okay. a WhatsApp, okay. but only for inside the community. So they can talk, they can download information. There's a central library, okay. and it's all things that you can get off the shelf. So the vision really was light, enlightenment. That's very interesting. Okay. Um, you talked about street lighting. Yes. Of course, uh, in the Philippines, we only uh, there are off-grid areas that has no access to electricity. But one event that uh, happened here, of course, especially in Mindanao, was the Marawi siege. Yes. And uh, can you give us an introduction of this before we show the video? Well, okay. this, this was a basic, uh, you know, there's, there's, the Philippines has challenges. Okay. And this is both nature and, you, you know, human cost. Okay. Nature in Tacloban, where, you know, uh, we could not take five months for imported solar lights to get to Tacloban. So, okay. the t same technology, we use the women over there, paperwork, to be able to light up 7,000 houses. Okay. And now, uh, many years later, we have the human tragedy uh, of, uh, of, of Tacloban, where 700,000 people have been displaced mm -hmm. in a totally damaged city. I mean, I've traveled, uh, you know, I, I bring, uh, I fix, I, a lot of the lights in Yemen, mm -hmm. solar lights, were actually Im implemented by Liter of Light. Wow. Uh, so uh, this was the same thing. I said, look, I do it in Ethiopia, I do it in Pakistan. Now I want to do it for Marawi. And so working with, uh, working with the local communities, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, a lot of them women cooperatives, they're all building the solar lights by hand and they're now lighting the center of Marawi. It's just the, the power, you know how they call the women, uh, ilaw ng tahanan. Okay. Yes. I always call them the ilaw ng bayan. Wow. So wow. this is the story of Marawi, of how we work together with women uh, entrepreneurs to start lighting up refuge, the refugee areas mm -hmm. so that they're, they're safer. Crime is down 70%. And now we're starting to light the first ones to light the center of Marawi. Mm -hmm. uh, we were given uh, you know, help with the Department of Energy, the military to fly there. Uh, Pepsi is one of our, our donors. And of course, uh, one of the prizes is this Zayed Future Energy Prize, mm -hmm. where we're now gonna build uh, centers where women cooperatives can now mm -hmm. not receive but start building solar lights to be able to light up uh, those areas. Especially because now La Sureco and, and those areas have lost the consumer base in the center. So there's, you know, fluctuating brownouts uh, that uh, these camps uh, can now have uh, a steady uh, form of clean, you know, uh, uh, safe uh, and non-toxic energy. With the with the Marawi streets, you said you have lighted uh, that part. Uh, are you given a specific area, uh, or it's uh, it was the government who selected those areas? Actually, the Department of Energy uh, selected okay. it because uh, you know uh, Marawi, in a, in a in a very strange sense, uh, there was an approaching Earth R, and Marawi was deemed as one of the darkest places on Earth. Okay. Can yes. you imagine a, a modern city now called the darkest place on earth? An earth are. So I said, why not, uh, you know, why not work together to light up Marawi? Mm -hmm. uh, what will it take to light up the center of Marawi to give a, a vein of, of, of new energy, of new life in, in a city that, that, you know, has this been destroyed? And so if you play the video a little bit, uh, you will see how uh, with, mm -hmm. with simple technology, uh, and you know, as I said, uh, La Sureco, wonderful. You know, they were the the people that still stuck around. The, mm -hmm. the linesmen that are now rebuilding are the first ones to go into the center to just bring lights to the main street. So uh, it's a very inspirational. Mm -hmm. And and I just wanted to say the last the last person out of Marawi, uh, mm -hmm. besides the combatants, was a, a, a woman. Uh, you know, her name is uh, the general manager. Her name is Lick Lick. Okay. And she was the last one to keep the power on in Marawi okay. uh, b before, you know, before it, uh, no, before, uh, before, of course, things got out of hand. And mm -hmm. so she evacuated. But the last woman who 
holding the power on in Marawi was was uh, uh, Miss Likli. How how simple is it to build it? Like for example, of course Marawi is just one of the uh, war torn areas that can uh, where you can help. But now, uh, how easy is it to assemble and to put this up? Well, you know, we in terms of your resources, are you? Is there a lot of people that are involved, or it's just the simple? Technology and then you pass it on to the community. Well, well, being part of the solar revolution, there's two ways. Either okay. you go into debt to be able to buy it, or go into five six, or, or you know, or or uh, <coughs> or microfinance, which is also very. Or you can create uh, people that are empowered mm -hmm. to be able to assist. So we we access schools. Mm -hmm. We go to schools in in thirty minutes. We can make a kid build from a dirty kerosene to solar in 30 minutes. We go to corporates. Uh, we go to, uh, you know, uh, uh, anyone, anyone mm -hmm. can be a solar engineer. It's just the fact that this kind of technology is not widely displayed and widely accessed. Uh, so uh, we're, we believe that the uh, solar revolution mm -hmm. should be a top down, you know, it should be a power of the people, the power to know what it is, the power to access the parts from, from you know, from uh, from local parts, uh, and also the, the power to transform women cooperatives from just making you know like indigenous weave and pottery into uh, one of the energy pioneers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very exciting. Before we go into a break, can you also uh, describe your journey? I'm sure this idea, you know, is not simple. You there was a journey that you followed. So can you describe uh, that kind of journey? Was it easy? Was it hard? Was it? Uh, were you able to? Uh, what? What? Where was the? When and where was that break? When you hit that break, and then you said, "This is it," and it finally exploded. I think uh, people invest more in uh, what is called, like you know, solar farms and. But a lot of the people that really need it, they're passed upon. So let's say you had the hydro, hydro plant here, but your lines go over poor communities and go to the central city, let's say Baguio. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, the, the, what, what really drove the point mm -hmm. was uh, during the time of uh, you know, uh, Haiyan, yeah. where really uh, uh, lights were not coming for mm -hmm. months. And so really, we were able to, to, to show how we could scale such mm -hmm. a knowledge. We also have uh, uh, this expansion. So we put up this video mm -hmm. of Yai Hayan and it hit 60 million views. Wow. We had John Kerry, who was one of those people that first recognized it, and we were recognized right there as Fulbrighters, uh, right, on the, right, right on the field. Like he made a whole sp a speech mm -hmm. on Litter of Light. Wow. So it, it gave us you know, that, that start. But today we're in about 20 countries around the world. I have mm -hmm. a, about 1,700 active members. Mm -hmm. About 10 of that is paid. Uh, we hit about, uh, we're hitting more than a million lights, I think mm -hmm. since last year, mm -hmm. uh, but they're all maintained. Uh, in July, I'm going to be going to the middle of the Amazon. So this is my second mm -hmm. trip mm -hmm. uh, in Brazil. We're going to the middle of the Amazon, uh, deeper. So we went two weeks. Uh, and there's there's really piranhas and there's really okay. you know let's talk about Brazil when we get back. Uh, this uh, you're still watching Open for Business. Stick with us.
We're on Open for Business and you're watching here at eaglenewslive.com. I'm Cesar Valleos and with me is Ila Diaz, the uh, Executive Director of Litter of Light. Before we proceed with the discussion, let's watch this video. The next one is the world record, no? The, okay. the world record. Okay. That looked very <laughs> easy and uh, and exciting. But you know what what is really interesting is that you mentioned earlier about Yemen, about Africa, Marawi, and they're also in Brazil. Can you talk more about the countries where you you were at? So yeah, we're very strong in Malaysia. Uh, we have about 700 strong. Mm -hmm. uh, almost the same also in Brazil. We have Colombia, we have uh, Peru, uh, we have Chile, uh, we have Mexico, we have Kenya, uh, we have India, we have Nepal. So uh, simple technologies. Of, this, of the countries that you mentioned, what is it that has the greatest impact? Something that you really remember wherever you are? Uh, we have uh, energy poverty, the need, mm -hmm. but also we have a youth that wants to get involved. Okay. They are tired of like just rock concerts and you know, come and then, you know, afterwards you can change the world. Okay. And then of course, okay, how do we change the world? No. Change is up to you, you know. So, so, so they're starting to realize that uh, a lot of it is promotion. It's you know, it's it, it, it's you know, uh, uh, getting names, getting emails. But a lot of young people are getting frustrated. It's like, yes, you know, we we're, we're energized. What do we do? But because a lot of the marketing people are not actually uh, in the social work, okay, they don't yes. know how to organize people for uh, for social good. Mm -hmm. So what we really are excited about is when we can organize around the technology. Uh, you know, I have a team right now going into Honduras. I have a team right now going into Haiti. I mean, we have the president of Haiti holding it. We, ha we, have, we just got an award by the Queen of England for mm -hmm. our work in Bangladesh. Uh, we, as I said, you know, Zayed Future Energy Pride, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Al Maktoum and Sheikh Al Nayan mm -hmm. uh, awarded our, our foundation. And also, also the most exciting one is we're one of thousands, you know, we're, uh, sorry, we're, we're less than 60 in the world being chosen uh, for, you know, the, the, the capacity to do change that have been chosen to be the first tenants of Expo 2020. And that's 30 million people to make an impression. So we're now on our journey to say, yes, we're from the Philippines, but because yes. we live in so much poverty, so much energy poverty, uh, we can do stuff. We can use our people power. We can use our skills, our innovation to transform it and share this with other southern communities. So this is not north-south. No, this is not mm -hmm. west, you know, west uh, U.S. And, and Europe. This is south people living in poverty, inventing things that work. Mm -hmm. uh, in our in our society and transferring it across the equator and across places where the same kind of energy poverty exists. That is very interesting in the sense that here is a, a, a Filipino uh, sharing the technology in many parts of the country. But uh, I just have to go back a little. Of course, you had that MIT Harvard backing. How? What 
is what is it that MIT and Harvard gave you or uh, how did it mold you or how did it enhance that technology to make te that technology work? Well, you know, uh, as I said, you know, uh, one thing that really started me up was really being in, you know, uh, Ondoy and Tacloban and, and also just being so frustrated at the way that, you know, the, the Filipinos were perceived, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I even ask, is there a makeup artist for Lamok or Langaw that they put <laughs> the lang Langaw on the faces of Filipinos and make them look so terrible. And I said, look, I, I go all around, I go around the country, and I see the Filipinos as one of the most hygienic. They take mm, about yes. three times a day. <laughs> Where do you find these young people that are completely, you know, desperate? Uh, and, I, and, and I asked them, and they said, well, you know what? We don't get money by making you guys, making them look healthy and <laughs> energized. And, and I said, you know what? We don't want to be marketed as the world's greatest uh, beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. Which I, I want to create a movement mm -hmm. yeah. whereby even in a simple way and, and hopefully uh, that you know that of course following others that we can become global benefactors that nice. Filipinos can be understood. Mm -hmm. We're not just you know we're not just great as at uh, ano, at uh, you know malasakit of helping other people but we're also malasakit in technology. We can exactly. we can help others yes. get out of poverty and I wanted to create a, a global case study uh, that we're equal and then that we're doing good in the world. And that, you know, we're not, you know, one of the greatest recipients for bilateral relations, donations, and handouts, but also that we're giving back to the world. So mm -hmm. that was why, you know, I entered MIT to learn about technology for what is called appropriate technologies. And I went to Harvard to be able to find out, like, how to expand that kind of knowledge, what's the policy. But really, my aim was, can we create case studies where Filipinos, with actual numbers, are doing global change? And that mm -hmm. way... C can day, we? Absolutely. That's why, okay. you know, that's why I dedicated, you know, a, a part of my life to this, is, is, is to organize, you know, what is going to be now crossing 2,000 members around the world for, mm -hmm. the, for, for the one technology or the one concept where we could make a change. So uh, right now we're, you know, as I said, I just came back from Kenya. Uh, we, we were in the Maasai tribes. Uh, I came back from, you know, I came back from, from, uh, from Bangalore, came back from. So this is, this, and then I'm going back. So what I'm saying is, you know, uh, the capacity to do good mm -hmm. is something that I want to inspire Filipinos, that you have ideas that can change the world. And you can you can actually get it out there. Hindi lang yung parang hey you'll change the world rah rah rah. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> there are stories of Filipinos out there, Tony Meloto uh, mm -hmm. and others. And, and it shouldn't just Nado be uh, it shouldn't be just few mm -hmm. in the social enterprise that we can do global good. Mm -hmm. That was that's the only you know if and at the end of this whole story, if they can come up and say, "Oi, kung kaya nyan, they were just using a plastic." bottle, ano pa ako, ang mas mm -hmm. magandang invento mm -hmm. ko. Well and good. Outdo us. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is we broke the glass ceiling that we can also be global do-gooders. But what is your process? So how do you do that? How do you do it? What's your process in impacting and uh, sharing your story to the different countries and governments? Do you seek the help of the government or is it a direct uh, communication with the enterprise. So, what's amazing in, in, in you know, I don't want to call my generation as a <laughs> millennial. I'm a millennium. millennium. Okay. Okay. But the fact that uh, right now, we could mm -hmm. reach so many people by exactly what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. You're using Facebook, social media, mm -hmm. YouTube, okay. teaching people how to do it, exchanging. We could have not done this many years ago. But today, we can reach thousands of people to mm -hmm. emulate and replicate what we're doing using local parts, using local skills mm -hmm. uh, with the internet. This is change making 2.0. Mm -hmm. This is where, you know, this is not going village by village by village, barangay by barangay. Mm -hmm. This is going, you know, barangay to global, <laughs> exactly to the next correct. barangay to global. Uh, and, you know, as I said, I travel half the year. Uh, we do almost half a million, uh, half a million homes, mm -hmm. and the nice thing I don't really need to be there, but it's expanding rapidly. But more than that is the fact that Filipinos should take their place as one of the greatest boxers in the world, the greatest singers, but also great 
great humanitarian movements. I think that's the missing part. Mm-hmm. We we don't have to watch Leonardo DiCaprio, Al Gore. We shouldn't. Mm-hmm. That shouldn't be the required reading and the required videos inside schools. Mm-hmm. It should show that Filipinos can equal or better mm-hmm. PowerPoints by actually showing things on the ground. That is great. But um, can we say that uh, is it, it is because the concept of social entrepreneurship is not really as popular as the other topics and or is it because with social entrepreneurship some do it uh, as a lip service it's not really that kind of social entrepreneurship as you do it so what would businesses now do because of course some when when some corporations do tree planting to them that's already well, you contribution. know the, 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 the thing that is misunderstood largely and i think this is also some kind of uh, you know that it will be sort of disputed is the fact that you know uh, the social aspect of it is done by managers so sometimes corporates they 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 bring it in house okay yes. but they use uh, taxpayers money to run to run it so they're not governed as much which is they can use it more for marketing mm-hmm. uh they don't have to come up with results so mm-hmm. so so sometimes uh by using managers that are not trained in the social enterprise or not trained mm-hmm. to to use pro- to you to, to go to a social enterprise every day to make sure that it's sustainable they can cash burn it Mm-hmm. So they can cash burn uh, what is basically uh, uh, Filipino taxpayers' money, which is withheld by the company to do good. Uh, we believe that the you know uh, that cash burn is mm-hmm. actually not not as productive as making it into something that uses people, the economy, and also innovation uh, to scale. Start out with the tindahan, but at the same time, next thing you know, we're, we're you know as I said in 20 countries around the world. Mm-hmm. That is using profits to expand and do good and get more people involved. Uh, cash burn system is okay. Hey, you know we need to do a CSR on tree planting. Oh, how many did we do last time? Uh, 100. I think we'll do 200, 300. What's the sustainable of that? Is it, is anybody is anybody uh, taking care of the trees? Uh, so you'll find out that a lot of the tree planting that you know 90% of it is dead because nobody really maintains it mm-hmm. so their work is to do something once a year mm-hmm. for a limited time and to spend as much money making it big and marketing it rather than realizing that uh, development education is a sustained you know sustained uh, effort mm-hmm. and of course sustained income and so that's why uh, sustain social entrepreneurship has changed into something that you you take care of it to grow as you watch your you watch your market grow you watch mm-hmm. the competence of your employees rather than a three day okay let's make a big bang <laughs> and let's yes. spend millions yes but then it. so it's like one time big time and one the time. impact is not so great but the thing there's they're using taxpayers money that's okay. withheld okay. by the company so I think hopefully that that needs to change. Okay. We'll be showing another video and uh, y- you will comment later on on that because this shows you as the only Filipino organization to have won this prestigious award which is the Zayed, did I pronounce it? Yes, Zayed, Zayed Future Energy Prize. Let's watch this video. There's one that's not obeying. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anytime. Tabi mo pag naka world record. Yeah. So okay. that's the largest sustainable uh, sustainable lesson in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were challenged because I said, you know, I could teach any child or any woman in in, in the village 
Uh, if you give us enough, you know, if you give us 30 minutes time, I can teach how to convert a kerosene lamp, like a simple study lamp. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, we also teach mobile charging systems, mm -hmm. uh, street lights, and then now we're going to the local area network. Anyway, the the, the, the challenge by, you know, in, in Abu Dhabi was, okay, if I give you, uh, you know, uh, I think 270 children, how many could you, how many lights can you make? I said in my head, if 30 minutes, a whole day, sir, I... I could break the world record, and the world record exists. And, and and I think this is uh this is two thousand seven hundred uh, lamps built okay. built in a day. Uh, and then we we had uh, we had about uh, three hundred plus children. And so anyway, that, that's the that's the that's the face of the of the founder of the UAE. It's mm -hmm. a hundred his hundredth year mm -hmm. anniversary. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, we would like to break the world record again. Uh, but this just so shows you the capacity of having this, what is called, mm -hmm. you know, this blue ocean. That's as long as you believe that you can, you know, use technologies developed here to make changes in Filipinos' lives, but also to be able to change as many people around the world. But really, I want hopefully also them to, you know, I was very inspired by Muhammad Yunus when, you know, when he was able to use a, a social business to be able to give access to finance, mm -hmm. you know, using five women to be able to pay back uh, a loan. It's the same way that you use five women in the in, in the refugee camps or in, uh, in, in, in poor communities to be able to secure us giving them the material so that they can big, build lights and at the same time they pay us cash. Uh, but when you say Bangladesh, you sometimes, you know, say, oh, Muhammad Yunus, you know, the great humanitarian. And so I, I was hopefully that one day, you know, when, when kids go up to their, their yayas or, or, oh, malasakit. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they understand In that Filipino word, malasakit. that's why you care for me. That's why you left, that's why you left the Philippines so that you could, you know, go and, and bring malasakit. You're not just a, you know, you're not just a tool to cook, to... You uh, that is that is why you know that's why that's why you care and so really one of the things about litter blight is not really about the bottle and the water and mm -hmm. you know this global movement, but it's just the fact that one day hopefully we can transfer the idea of why we do it is because Filipinos have this kind of malasake. Before we end, Ila, again I'd like you to talk about uh, the uh, Expo 2020. Uh, to a lot of countries, that's a big deal, and you are the country representative. How were you chosen, and what is it that you will showcase at the Expo 2020? So we're doing an Expo Live, okay. uh, and this Expo Live is basically uh, for $100,000, you have to come up with a project. And so what we're showing and, and that we're moving is uh, that's just part of the price. Uh, there's another $250,000 grant. We want to build the greenest house in the country. So we want to use like uh, technologies that are available to us. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you walk on the floors, pavement generators, bubble generator mm -hmm. pumps. We want to have a house which green technologies are not just in businesses or in private homes, but mm -hmm. something that's accessible to the public. We also have a 36 square meter uh, slot uh, in inside the expo itself. But more than that, we're really trying to hone in uh, on two things. We want to tell a great story. Mm -hmm. So we want to show how Philippines has, has gone from here, from the darkness of Marawi and, and <coughs> sorry, well, and Tacloban, mm -hmm. and how it's expanded around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also want to come up with a book. And that way, when we're there, when we have all of these countries competing against us, we have uh, one thing to share, which is a great story about how Filipinos are also global humanitarians. Wow, that's exciting. But again, uh, what is your message to number one uh, millennials who have this specific characteristics and they may not necessarily know about social entrepreneurship? The other message would be, how would now CEOs try to shift their strategy to graduate from philanthropy or corporate social responsibility to the bigger area of sustainability and social entrepreneurship. You address maybe the younger ones first. I, I think, you know, uh, uh, changing the world is not just a matter of likes. Mm -hmm. But really, it's, it's, as I said, you know, we, we, 
change takes a long time. You really need to go out there and you really need to have a sustained way of, 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 of helping out. Mm-hmm. Uh, on our side of the NGO world, uh, if you don't uh, catch a young person to be socially involved uh, by the age of 21, and the younger a little bit the better, but uh, later on, uh, they do not go back into society to mm-hmm. be able to have a life of, you know, balanced service, being successful but also giving back. Mm-hmm. So if you don't train your kid uh, to be able to do social work, to be sensitive mm-hmm. uh, to to other people's, you know, uh, to you know, uh, as I said, uh, they are they are very capable, but then they just sometimes don't have the resources to be able mm-hmm. to be f- as fulfilled. If you don't if you don't make them sensitive to that, mm-hmm. then they'll learn how to block it out and, and you know put the phone on their face. Uh, clicks are not going to make it. So we need more parents to be more involved. But mm-hmm. this is also for employees. Mm-hmm. If you train them to do a once in a life, you know, once a year kind of big bang with, mm-hmm. and and don't and don't think about poverty as something that you have. Uh, you know, a sustained kind of impact, but also something that, you know, they can get their hands on. They're, mm-hmm. you know, they're very also very, uh, you know, uh, they see what kind of a sustainable impact is. Uh, that one will also not only take away, you know, our taxes and use it for, you know, a big, you know, a big uh, concert and marketing, yeah. but, okay. but really we need to get them more uh, involved, especially if they're using uh, taxpayers' money. Thank you very much, Ilak. And uh, that's open for business. That was a very uh, exciting discussion. I hope you can back again, uh, come back again so that you can talk more about social entrepreneurship. Open, uh, open for business. We'll be back in a while. Stick with us.